Tomlin from Devon County Council. Um, just listening to the inputs so far, I'm kind of mindful that I'm going to be repeating um, quite, a lot of, quite a lot of things. Um, just, a few of, just a few of the themes that, um, that I've picked up um, that are relevant, I mean, it's around commissioning practice, how effective um, that is. We've talked a lot about relationships and culture, but I'll be talking something about that. I think with boxing, um, how he... We can't hear you, by the way. can't hear Can you hear me now? I'm not speaking yes. into yes. enough. Okay. Apologies. Um, something about reporting and impact, how we develop different ways of um, seeing and measuring um, impact. I think we've talked a lot about this being very human. Um, and and um, finally, contextual. So I'm going to share with you um, some of the work that we've been doing in Devon over the past few years. Um, our, our journey, our story of the development of our um, strategy to end domestic and sexual violence and abuse. I'm going to start with offering a bit of, um, bit of Devon context. Talk a bit about the process that we've been through, some of the outputs, um, outcomes that we've um, that we've achieved, and then just offer some reflections. Um, I should say this is a bit, it's a bit subjective. Um, these are my um, observations and experiences um, from Devon. I make no apology uh, for that. So I've been involved in um, domestic and sexual violence abuse work in Devon for about four years. I inherited. Um, inherited a, a, um, a, a, a service or a system in Devon that was beacon status in the days of the Lord Clare Agreement. It was awash with money. Um, when it came into public health, um, that money had evaporated. Um, a tender process that, um, that, the, that the council initiated um, was seen by our incumbent provider, with three incumbent providers who petitioned Devon off. They uh, worked uh, kind of in isolation across Devon. Um, they were I think they sell a process as a brutalising process for them. They failed to um, they failed to succeed in the tender process, and we had an incoming provider. Um, that term, that had a really big impact on the relationship between those providers who are still in existence and Devon County Council. I think another consequence of the success of the local area agreement is that we had quite quite a large system that responded to domestic and sexual violence abuse. It became something of a specialist subject. Lots of territorialism um, and ownership around that client group, and that I think um, gave an excuse to other people in the system, social workers, for example, not to engage with domestic and sexual violence abuse. Domestic abuse is a, a, a significant issue for 60, 70, 80 percent of child protection cases. It's not well dealt with. So. <coughs> so the, a, fi a final point I want to make around some of the context is that we had a really low ambition. Um, the ambition that we articulated in our strategy um, at the time was um, harm reduction. So our ambition was to re reduce the harm of and from um, domestic and sexual violence abuse. It feels to me like that's the kind of aim that's colluding with um, domestic violence. We're ha we're, we accept this as part of the landscape. Um, our ambition is just to make it a bit less bad. So, uh, we recognised that we needed to um, think differently, do something differently. Um, we engaged an organisation, um, I'm sure many of you will know, called the Innovation Unit. And their stock in trade is around um, ethnographic studies. So this is really about putting um, people in Devon at the heart of how we think and work around this subject. Um, we, spent, um, we spent time um, sitting in the lives of people who experienced domestic and sexual violence abuse in Devon. Um, listening to their stories, listen, listen to their stories in their houses, in their words, uh, their experiences um, of the system that I and others um, are complicit in designing and, and delivering. And then we, we played those, uh, we played it, we, 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 we turned these stories into, uh, into um, manageable um, information that we fed into uh, storytelling sessions uh, with uh, representatives of the, of the service system. We didn't just use this, we used lots of other data as well. Um, perpetrator focus groups, lots of data, evidence, policy and so on. But I think the cornerstone of it was the stories. And what we did with that is generate, I'm sorry, you, you can't see this, but what, what, this, is a, this is a key artifact of our journey. This is a huge, um, a huge sheet uh, of, um, of insights that we generated through our process. And it was quite impactful in a way. People kind of walk in front of this. It's as big as this, big as this um, uh, space here. People walk around it, and it's almost like they're engaging with the system from a person's um, experience. I just want to share with you a few of the um, insights that we generated from, um, 
from our work. None of these will surprise you particularly, but the first one is that we, we routinely and commonly miss opportunities to engage with people at an early stage, um, particularly in um, healthcare settings, primary care um, in particular. And this is likely because we, um, we engage with the surface issue. We don't explore uh, what's brought some of it, what the root of the, of the issue is. It's complex. It's a really complex issue. Um, but our service system isn't set up to deal with complexity. Um, it's set up in a very reductionist way to manage an aspect of a person's life um, and not the rest of it. So, so everybody we spoke to had issues with um, housing, with uh, mental uh, and physical um, ill health, with finance, with work, with self-esteem issues. But our services aren't there to deal with the complexity and totality um, of, of people. I think another um, quite shocking thing for me was that it's very binary. Um, in this world, you're a victim or a perpetrator. We really think about things in those binary terms. And there's a, there's a really strong sense of a, of a codified um, language, value-laden and codified language around whether you're a, a perpetrator um, or a victim, how the system engages with you. I think a shocking thing as well was that our system um, engaged with victims, but not with perpetrators. And quite often, it requires um, victims to manage perpetration um, or suffer the consequences of that. So it wasn't, it wasn't surprising in the end to see um, social work case files uh, requiring um, female victims of domestic abuse to stop the perpetration of violence in front of the children or see her children removed. Um, I think um, our system is very geared towards uh, crisis. It's very geared toward victim, it's very geared toward crisis. It's very geared towards um, responding to crisis and helping people to manage risk to a level of tolerance, our tolerance. What it doesn't do is help people to move towards uh, a different life, a different set of circumstances. Did you look at your watch thing, Gary? Five minutes. Um, so, um, a final point then from, um, from our insights is that um, we spoke to 13 people, they'd experienced thousands of interactions from professional people across Devon, and maybe a handful of them um, were talked about. People don't just get help from a professional service system. Uh, work was a, was a key um, area. Work, one person um, attributed her manager of Tesco for saving her life. Um, where people did talk about professionals, what was really key, and we've talked about it a bit, uh, was, was adaptability, um, responsiveness, kindness, um, compassion. So we did all that, but all we did really was we produced a strategy. We produced a strategy, so, so what? We produced a strategy that looks a bit like this. We tried to focus more attention on prevention and intervention, uh, and move away from supporting and protecting people. Um, but what difference does any of that make? Um, and this, this is my challenge to myself, really. So we produced a strategy, but what difference have we made? I'll just, I'll just um, highlight a few of the things, a few of the areas in which I think that um, our work has, has changed things. I think attribution is quite difficult. Um, some things would have happened anyway, um, and some things I, I can draw more direct parallel with the work that we've done. I think, um, but I, I think the key observation reflection for me um, is about lots of the things that we've done in the strategy or with external funding. They're project, bits of projects that stick on the side of a service system that we know isn't effective. What's more difficult, I think, and more important, um, is to change the system, to change how uh, workforce development are key thing to me. So how we, how, we, how we require and expect our social work staff to engage with men, with perpetrators, with the whole family, uh, with strength-based approaches, is a difficult and challenging thing. But our strategy uh, revealed to us that um, we're still in the foothills um, of some of those conversations. Other things, um, it's helped us to leverage a million pounds into Devon in the last two years because I think we've got um, an interesting story and an interesting process that we've been through. But eventually that money will go and it's only good, I think, it's only useful if we use that money to transform uh, how the system operates. I want to I wanna just offer a few um, personal reflections on what, um, what's been important to, to me and what I've seen across the system. So I think, um, um, I think ownership and leadership, having advocates for the work is really important and we have a, we have a very strong vocal director of public health who's been a strong advocate of this work but we have big gaps um, in, in ownership in other areas, notably um, in the health sector 
I think, um, I think elements of social care. I think we have to have advocates who support what it is that we're that we're doing. And I think I think to help that is to have a strong, compelling vision underpinned by um, evidence, which I guess comes back to the um, impact point. I think we need. Um, um, to think more about the wider determinants. It's not just about the service system, it's about the lives that people have, the communities in which they live, the context. So I think we need to understand much more about the context of people, how, how we work at a much more contextual level. And I think we've talked a lot about um, measuring and reporting and so on. We need to think about how we move beyond simple service measures and outputs to a different way of thinking about um, outcomes uh, and, and impact at a systemic level. A few, a few personal reflections. I was aware, um, having talked to people, that um, you know, I've been in Devon for, for a long time, I've been involved in commissioning work for a long time, and I'm aware that um, in spite of our best of intentions, a lot of the things that, uh, that I preside over do harm and complicit in a system that, um, that does harm. Um, to people, and that's that's quite humbling and um, and challenging. Um, so it's it's really helped me, I think, to to see that and to um, to form a different kind of alliance with the citizens of Devon, on whose behalf um, I work. Helps me to uh, challenge a bit, to call things out when I have um, kind of insight like like the ones that we generated, and um, helps me to kind of articulate who I'm working on behalf of. Um, I think. The stories were great, people really liked it. It was quite a conservative, um, quite a conservative council, um, Devon. Um, I think people thought it was quite novel, um, interesting, it, it looked quite visceral. For a while it, um, it was quite disruptive. Um, people thought this is kind of exciting and edgy. Um, but all these things have been revealed about what happened. It created a sense of disruption that was really positive, I think. It was really, there's a period of uncertainty. Um, I think during that period of disruption, probably could have achieved more than we did. I think there's a really strong gravitational pull towards the status quo that, um, that in the absence of knowing what to do with that disruption um, happens. And I think, that, uh, I think that things feel a bit like they've frozen over um, a little bit. Um, the last thing I think is that um, what, this has, what this has helped me to do, I think, instead of being um, um, a commissioner in Devon County Council operating within a administrative bureaucratic framework. Um, I think it's blurred the boundary between me as a person and me as a professional. I think um, listening to people's stories, people confiding in you their stories, um, is, a, is a powerful thing. And um, it connects me with a lived experience of people um, in Devon. It reminds me, like I said, that I'm, I'm in their service. So I, I really advocate, I think, as part of any approach towards complexity, Listening, getting down with people, listening to them, seeing the world from their perspective. Thank you.